morning and thank you for joining us today. There's very little evidence and reference to state takeovers that actually achieved their stated goals of radically improving performances at filling schools. One of the ways this is best exhibited is at the local level. In the overwhelming majority of localities, parents and citizens are given an opportunity to elect local representatives who advance their community's unique perspectives and values. Yet in several predominantly poor and African-American and Latino school districts, this democratic process has been taken over. Nationwide and paralleled in New Jersey, with state takeover of local school districts, it has been found children have been negligible improvement, seen negligible improvement, or even dramatic setbacks in their educational performances. State takeover districts have created a breeding ground for fraud and mismanagement mismanagement of public funds. Teachers and staff face high turnover and instability, creating a disrupted learning environment for our children. Students of color of those especially in special needs face harsh disciplinary measures and discriminatory practices that further entrench a two-tiered educational system. In almost each takeover district, teachers are the first to experience hasty and arbitrary staffing changes. Many times, the entire staff of all of a takeover schools has been fired at once and is usually replaced by new teachers with far less experience. Real estate deals and fees paid to education consultants can siphon millions of dollars away from direct investment in the students enrolled in turnaround schools. At best, these state takeover intrusions are bad policy, and at worst, they are create constitutional violations. It cannot go unnoticed that an overwhelming percentage of districts that have experienced takeovers serve poor African American and Latino students and voters. School turnaround strategies should focus on curricula that is engaging, culturally relevant, and challenging, high quality teaching rather than high stakes test testing. Wraparound support such as health care, eye care, social and emotional services that support academics. Positive discipline practices such as restorative justice and social and emotional learning support. Transformational parent and community engagement. The full community should actively participate in planning and decision making. Inclusive school leadership committed to develop strategic plans that include authentic input from teachers, parents, community, partners, non-instructional staff, youth, and other stakeholders. There are less intrusive and collaborative and highly effective ways to achieve the successful transformation of low-performing schools. Community advocates and school board members in localities and communities elsewhere have outlined more comprehensive transformation plans than state plans. Even in most cases, Districts working in concert with Office of Civil Rights and U.S. Department of Education or Department of Justice has experienced more success than state takeover districts. We should take a look at these plans, weighing all options. Districts should be allowed to look at these plans and decide what is best for their children. The bill would eliminate authority of the State Board of Education to place a school district under full or partial state intervention under the New Jersey Quality Accountability Continuum. The bill provides that any school district that is under state partial or full intervention be returned to full local control within one year. This legislation will give school districts back the power to make the right decisions for the students and the communities they serve. Thank, thank you, Assembly, Assemblyman Wimberly. Um, Assemblyman Wimberly rep represents one of the districts that is currently under control, which is the Patterson School District. My name is Grace Spencer, and I represent the city of Newark, which is also under state control, uh, which is also under state control. In the city of Newark, we have an advisory board, and recently we had an election for new members on the advisory board. Clearly, when you look at the city of Newark and you look at the leadership that has been propelling this district, not in the correct direction, but in the wrong direction, we see things happening to the students in the city of Newark that are deplorable, and we cannot stand for it any longer. We have conditions that exist in the district that have resulted in lead being in our water. Certainly, if this, I cannot say whether or not if it was under local control, there would have been a different outcome, but certainly we would not have learned about lead being in the water in 2014, we would not have learned about it in 2016. Certainly there are things that would be different 
as far as involvement and as far as participation by the local community. Newark has one of the largest, if not the largest, school budget in the state of New Jersey. And if you look at the, the outcomes for the students, it is not reflective of the money that is being spent. More things need to happen within the district, and that starts on a local level. And that starts with people <coughs> and parents who are in the community who have vested who have a vested interest in what happens. It's time for a different, it's time for a new day in the city of Newark. And that new day starts with our school district. And that day starts with local control. And under this bill, A3637, that's a possibility. One year after this bill is enacted, it should happen. It should have happened a long time ago. But I stand with Assemblyman Wimberly as well as the other assembly persons who have signed on to this bill to see local control return to the districts that are currently under state control. Thank you. Uh, good, uh, good morning, everyone. Um, I want to uh, thank Assemblyman Wimberly and Assemblywoman Sumter, Assemblyperson Spencer and Tucker for joining to support restoration of takeover districts to local control. One of the things that I would like to address is history. We know that historically, State intervention occurred during a period of time when our very large school districts in the state had issues with fiscal management, issues with student performance, and issues with graduation rates. Ever since the statute was enacted, creating school takeover, in each of the cities that has experienced school takeover, we have seen nothing but successive administrations of state appointed superintendents and leadership that have done a worse job in fiscal management, educational outcomes, and support for teachers in school districts. Instead of moving these districts forward, state intervention has made these districts regress. The traditional schools in our state have been under assault during the past several years. And as more emphasis has been placed in supporting charter education, which by the way, if that is a choice of a parent, I have no problem with that. But I do have a problem with sucking the air and the life out of our traditional public school systems taking that financial support in order to support a school demonstration that was designed to serve as a laboratory for innovative teaching methodology, new ways of securing parental involvement, and what we have learned from the operation of charter schools was supposed to be injected into the structure of our traditional public school systems. That has not happened. And with each successive new governor, we have seen new educational ideology. We have experienced so many different, quote, school reform models dating back to the Whitman administration. If you talk to principals and administrators in these school districts, as soon as the school gets geared and ramped up to interject one form of a reform model, along comes another governor and another commissioner of education, all of that is thrown out and then a new model of educational methodology is injected. This has done nothing but harm these districts. School construction, school renovation, school repair continues to be an issue. And, and sadly, we see people who come and work in the districts who have no connection with the local communities, no connections with parents. We've seen the award of really obnoxious amounts of money provided to consultants or carpetbaggers, if you will, who come into these districts, come there to make money, 
and they're gone. It needs to stop. We need to address local control. The governor has gone on record that he believes we have accomplished the indicators that the law provides for restoration of local control. Let us do that. This bill is seeking to move us towards local control, but in a very smooth transition and of utmost importance to many of us in the legislature is that some support for these districts come along with it. Because, for instance, Patterson that Assemblyman Wimberly and Assemblywoman Sumter represent, we knew last year there were going to be significant problems in that district. There have been 600 layoffs in that school district. You should see the conditions of some of those buildings. If there was local control and the local community had input into the operation of their schools, you would not see that going on. So I am proud to stand with my colleagues in the Assembly and in the Senate who want to see our leadership put this bill up for a vote and we look forward to working with the Commissioner of Education, the superintendents in these state appointed districts, and with the governor's office to do the right thing on behalf of these students in these takeover districts. Good morning. I'm Sharon Kringle. I am the Policy and Outreach Director at Education Law Center. And I am going to uh, read you the statement of Education Law Center on Assembly Bill 3637. This was prepared by David Shiara, who is the Executive Director of ELC. And you can also find it on the ELC website on the, on the homepage. Education Law Center strongly supports A3637, which repeals New Jersey School District Takeover Law. We thank Assemblyman Benji Wimberly for his leadership on this pressing issue and all the co-sponsors for standing as champions of educa education equity in our state legislature. Next year will mark 30 years since the state's school district takeover law was enacted by the legislature. The primary purpose of the law was to address ongoing patterns of fiscal mismanagement of school budgets by local districts. In the wake of its passage, the state assumed operation of three of our largest school districts. Newark has been under state control for 20 years, Patterson for 25 years, and Jersey City for 23 years. In 2013, the state assumed formal operation of the Camden Schools, a district that had been under intensive state control under special economic recovery legislation for the five preceding years. All four state takeover districts serve very high concentrations of low-income children, English language learners, and students with disabilities. All of the districts are almost exclusively African American and Latino. For over two decades, and in Camden's case, almost a decade, the voters, taxpayers, and parents in these communities have been effectively disenfranchised and disconnected from the operation of their neighborhood schools. Schools which, as in every other New Jersey district, are supported by local property tax revenue. Repealing the state takeover law is long overdue. There are three reasons why the legislature, legislature should act quickly to end the state's long-term operation of the Newark, Jersey City, Patterson, and Camden public schools. First, state takeover as a means to improve educational opportunities and outcomes has proven over these many years to be completely ineffectual. Nor has state operations stabilized districts' budgets. In fact, the state-run districts continue to be among our lowest performing, especially when compared to the performance of other locally governed high poverty districts such as Elizabeth, Perth Amboy, New Brunswick, Union City, and Passaic. Furthermore, the Patterson and Newark budgets continue to suffer from year to year, with severe and glaring reductions in essential teachers, support staff, and other resources necessary for a thorough and efficient education. Second, state takeover is obsolete. Since 1987, several new, new tools have been put in place to address fiscal and other problems in local districts. The fiscal accountability law was enacted over a decade ago to surgically deal with districts in fiscal and budgetary crisis, allowing for the appointment of a state fiscal monitor with the power to override local boards of education and fix broken budgets. The extensive accountability system put in place over the last 15 years 
under New Jersey Department of Education regulation determines whether schools and districts are meeting educational performance be benchmarks and if not, prescribes interventions by the state to make needed improvements in program and instruction. The bottom line is these new tools are more nuanced and strategic and fully enable the state to take action to ensure New Jersey school children are afforded a thorough and efficient education. Third, state takeover under Governor Christie's administration is being used for a purpose for which the law was never intended. Takeover was never meant to be a vehicle for allowing the state to impose any preferred set of education reforms, such as charter school expansion and merit pay for teachers, on local communities that have no say in such important and potentially long-lasting changes. Rather, it was intended to allow the state to intervene and fix identified problems and exit as quickly as possible. When Governor Christie announced in 2011 that the state would not leave Newark even if the district met the standards for restoration of local control, state takeover entered a new and deeply disturbing phase. Disenfranchised local residents faced the prospect of having no say in the future of their schools with no end in sight, solely to achieve a narrow political agenda emanating from Trenton. For these reasons, it is time to end the state takeover law and promptly restore local control in Newark, Patterson, Jersey City, and Camden schools to the residents of those communities, just as is, the, as is the case in every other New Jersey municipality. We urge the legislature to quickly approve this bill. Thank you. Good morning. And for me, it's simple. This is why the Assemblyman Wimberly and I have come to Trenton. Uh, we came to write some of the flaws that are evident in the laws. Uh, when you have schools where it's now April going into May without certified teachers being in those classrooms, without a stable teacher, and you're still using substitutes under a state takeover district, it's a problem. The very reasons 25 years ago that the district was taken over are the very reasons that plague the same district today. When we're talking about millions in dollars that the school budget is short, when we're talking about over 600 teachers laid off with additional layoffs coming, when we can't get a number on the amount and the dollar figure of consultants that are used when new programs, testing programs come into play. For a park, we had to add technology to a number of the schools throughout the state. There was money for that. There's not enough money for books. There's not enough money to put teachers in the classrooms that are needed when classrooms are over 22 children per student, up to 30 students in a classroom, there's a problem. The other piece that we suffer from is not having any accountability of a state, of a Department of Education. Who holds the bag? When Patterson was taken over, Newark, Jersey City, Camden, people left with their credentials shattered. The state has not had their credentials shattered other than continuous bond downgrades. We had to fight for school buildings to be built under the leadership of myself and, Assembly, and Assemblyman Wimberly because they weren't being built, but yet we had approvals. We left surpluses in school construction funding areas. We left surpluses and wouldn't build the schools that are over 100 years old. If you see the dilapidated buildings that some of the students have to learn in, it's not conducive for a learning environment. Playgrounds that are fenced in as penitentiaries is not conducive for a learning education center. So enough is enough. It's now time for us to write the flaws that are in the laws. I am elated to be a partner with Assemblyman Wimberly on this legislation and all my legislative colleagues because it's not about complaining about the circumstances. It's about doing something to fix the circumstances that we are in and making sure that our youth, that our teachers, that our school administrators have environments where they can be successful and not continuously pointing a finger at them or giving them environments that are health hazards for them, safe, safe zones for our children, and making sure they're educational facilities. So that's why I'm elated that we're taking this big step today to right the flaws that have been wronged for over 25 years. Thank you, Assemblyman Wimberly. I'm here in support of the bill because I think it's about time that we have our control back of our local schools.
schools. Over 20 some years we've been under the state control with no progress. And we have elected boards that have no say so. It's just like having taxation without representation. We want our local control back in our schools because we can do a better job than what you, the state has been doing over the past 20 years. So I'm just going to be simple. We need to have our control back because I see it as giving the people back their rights because every time we, met, we get to the benchmark, we're there and they change the rules. It's time to stop ta changing the rules and let's play on the same level and give our local control back to our schools and give us the, the represent representation that we need because these are our tax dollars that our parents are paying, that our citizens are paying, and we need to be represented.